Good afternoon. It's quite an honor to be here and to share these days I have with many of you in the room today. And you see in front of you two words, space transportation. And I've been touched by that story of the gift. Within this industry, as with something extraordinary, there's barriers that we face, challenges, and it's those things that give us the gift as we understand opportunity comes with challenge if we accept the challenge and we choose opportunity. I want everybody to look over here. I have the most wonderful friends at the Ice Hotel. And they have brought this beautiful piece of ice here and they helped me understand that they face challenges every year. They have to build the ice hotel out of the River Torre every year. They are in an isolated part of the world, as I am in New Mexico. And every year they must bring 28,000 people north of the Arctic Circle to the ice hotel. Those people, as you have today, use one of our transportation industries. Some of you have come by car or air transportation. Some of us might have come by rail, but each of us got here likely using some part of a transportation system. Space transportation is one of the five industries that humans will use as a transportation industry. So, Michael uh, Lopez Alegria uh, asked a question, how many people had been to space in the audience? And the answer was what was pretty predictable. Only him. And now I want to ask a question I always ask of the audiences when I speak. How many people in this audience want to go to space? Exactly. That's what we're going to talk about today. How do you connect the I want to to help us create that? I work to create increased access to space for mankind. Oh, it's my earring, huh? Yeah. Great. Ah, thank you. I started this work in 1991 actively, but I had been working on it before that as well. Think about those words, increased access to space for mankind. Okay. This is a Google Earth image of what it might be like to come back from space and what Michael talked about as a glider to, let's say, where I live in, space, in, in New Mexico, at Spaceport America, near Spaceport America. So you can see White Sands from there. And now we're coming into the Rocky Mountain chain. You see the Rio Grande Riverbed. And Pretty quickly, we would land this glider, the spaceship, I mean, a space shuttle came in as a glider and the Virgin Galactic system would come in as a glider. Now, let's think, as a space tourist, what it would be like someday to fly from Spaceport America across the United States, possibly fly through the atmosphere And as Michael said, there's tremendous inspiration that you experience as a human in space. And come in and land at Spaceport Sweden. Let's think future living. 
the first commercial spaceport in Europe. And this would be one of many such journeys that people would take as part of this next transportation industry. There's five transportation industries that humans have evolved since we've been on Earth. Ground evolved first, sea, rail, air, and space. Now, we are humans, and we are the first human transportation system. This is Lucy, and the research indicates carbon dating. She was discovered, her bones, in the Afar Valley in Ethiopia, 1976. She's hypothesized pretty much to have evolved 3.2 million years before this current era. And Lucy was a transportation system, an upright walking hominid, a pre, uh, an australopithecine, true, but she likely evolved as a transportation system. She evolved upright walking to do what humans do. When they move around and when they go places, they do two things. They go with other humans and they take stuff with them. Likely, Lucy needed two arms to carry her children and to carry their food and her food. Right now, Fast forward, there's over a billion cars for personal transportation on the road. Rail cargo, I mean, uh, ground transportation is measured in the billions of tons annually that transport our goods across the globe. So we're big transporters, humans. We like to go places with each other, and we like our stuff with us when we go. So, 19 million people last year took cruises. I'm just taking a wild guess, not a lot of work gets done on those cruises. You're going there, they're mostly for vacation and for enjoyment. And most of the time, people go on cruises with lots of people around them and golf courses on the ship and pools and gambling casinos and shops. It's amazing what we do when we travel. We are quite a demanding species. The sea transportation industry likely evolved about 30,000 years ago using skins, and then we got real fancy and got rows of oars because we wanted to bring each other along to see the sights. But sea cargo transportation, uh, container ships, transport, the largest amount of cargo by far across the globe annually. The next transportation industry to evolve was rail transportation, and humans on rail transportation in the United States alone took 19 million trips, and the rail cargo business, again, is measured in the billions of tons annually across the globe. And I hope you noticed SAS up there. And that was a Volvo that I had in ground transportation because I am in Sweden after all. <laughs> 32 million trips were booked on over 1,000 airlines last year. And nobody probably could have hypothesized that FedEx, and those types of air transportation industries were going to evolve, but they have, because humans like to go in groups with each other, and they like their stuff with them. See, so the next transportation industry is a little unique right now. This guy's all by himself. I'm guessing it's a guy. I'm not positive. But I don't see any color, no jewelry, so what do you think? I think it's a guy. And <laughs> that, that's going to change. And no, exactly, see? And then we have the space station. And Michael did something today, and Stu did something today. Each of us talked about what happened before us 
to get us where we are now. It is very important that we understand sometimes you have to overcome a problem to get to the next step. Now, space transportation will become a part of future living. However, 517 people have been to space since 1969, and that's a problem. Not too many. And I hope I've convinced you by now how do we grow space transportation? We put more humans into space. How come? Because humans create demand when they travel. When Michael was telling me the food he got to bring with him when he went to space, um, he made his own paella, and he had this real funky cooking device on the space station. Forget it. I mean, if humans go to space in great numbers, that's one of the first things that's got to go, is crummy food. But for the moment, you get my point. When humans travel, they create demand for products and services. So this is a, my point, when humans travel, even when they go to space, they have to go in groups. When humans travel, they like to explore. Now, you would think astronomy, going to look at an eclipse, the silent night, nip, they got to have a crowd, star parties. We are who we are, and we like to go in groups. We like to go to exotic places to explore, and when we do, we build stuff because we like to go to cool places, and then we want to build stuff when we get there. And we want partners. We want partners. We don't want to go alone. So five agencies, 14 sovereign nations are a part of the International Space Station, including Sweden. We are who we are. Those of us who are in relationships hear it all the time from yourself. I'm the way I am. You have to accept me the way I am except humans as we are. We like to be together when we travel. We like to go interesting places. We like to build things when we get there. In my country, the Native Americans, they're still mad, you know, because we had to build stuff, you know, all over the place. But in space transportation, if we listen to Stephen Hawking, it's not sure there's other people out there, and we heard a funny talk about the space aliens, and Stephen Hawking said, even if there are people out there, you don't have to answer if they call. <laughs> <laughs> However, the space transportation industry will grow. What are our next steps as we increase access to space for mankind? For me, I work and I do what I can with who I am close to. I work at a university, and I work with many students all over the world. And the last time I came to Sweden, they put the Rim Gymnasium, which is where I was yesterday, uh, they put together some really fun art to help us understand what it's like to walk through the gateway to space. And these are some of the people that we met when we were here in Sweden. And Johanna, you're in there, and Bengt. We have some wonderful students that recognize some of the people that were in this picture that are in the room today. Why do you think I work with these folks, besides the fact that they inspire me. Many of the speakers today have talked about working with students. You know why I work with them? It's not personal, people. You're the largest consumer group in the world. <laughs> 15 to 34. When I help you send your experiments to space, what do I expect that you're I expect you to create demand for these products and services that we are building. 
So another thing that I want to talk to you about is I do this project with a lot of people, provide annual access to space for students for their cargo and for their experiments. Now, buying rockets is not cheap. So I work with another group of people critical to the success of any new emerging industry. I work with the rich people. We love them. They're the ones with the money. And it's my generation, the baby boomers, that are set to inherit over $40 trillion in the next 20 years. So if we want to go to space, we're going. But while we're waiting to inherit our dough, we might as well do something really interesting, and this is it. For me, my passion is to provide annual access to space. My passion is to provide access. Because when I saw Neil Armstrong fly, I knew that wasn't going to happen to me. And it pissed me off. <laughs> so, don't make a woman mad if you don't, don't want to deal with what happens. This is what happens. This is what happens. My passion is to give you all and the rest of us access to space. And I'm starting with what I can do and with who I'm close to. Provide annual access to space from Spaceport America. I've done it now for five years. We've done it, not I. We have done it five years in a row. And this is what we do. We fill up rockets with student experiments. So I just thought I'd show you what it looks like. Sometimes it's better to show folks what you're doing. We're putting experiments into canisters and then we stack those canisters. It sort of looks like a rocket. We put a skin over the rocket. That rocket then gets put on a rail. And this is uh, the third launch out of Spaceport America. This particular rocket went to 73 miles. Now, we don't have mission control. It's not gorgeous. It's a trailer. But, you know, it works. Five vehicles armed. Three, two, one, fire. Missile away. I love that. Five times I've got to launch next week. As soon as I get back, these are my students. And they create the most wonderful T-shirts. It's hysterical. They have stuff on there like, it is rocket science, you know. And black ops, you know, it's great. It's really great. There's so much creativity. And we have students design the mission patches. And I showed one of the mission patches to Richard Branson. And he wrote the student a note. And he looked me right in the eye and said, is this student going to get this? And I said, yes, sir. And I presented this signed patch to his whole school. They thought it was very cool. But you know, I need the students to have challenges that excite them and align with the environment that's going on around them. Many of you all that are young and conscientious about your consumption understand that the space industry could possibly be using fuels that we might not want to continue to, to, um, to use as we go forward in this industry. And what I'm asking my students to do is to not only send their experiments to space, but I expect them to eventually support themselves and this industry. We have to work on commercial technologies. God bless NASA, they've been spending the taxpayers' money for years. Now we have to make money. Space business will be about making money, not spending it. If we can produce crude oil from algae in space, we can refine it in space and sell it in space, and we can refuel those satellites orbiting in low Earth orbit. We don't have to haul fuel. We can manufacture it from byproducts of humans living in space. Got to have a dream. Got to do something. Might as well make money. Here's something else that I've done We've done. I have a conference that I do every year. And with the proceeds from that conference and from my sponsors, 
We bought a ticket on Virgin Galactic, not for me, for you, for your experiments. We will fill up a vehicle someday with your experiments and with your ideas. They don't have to be just science experiments. They can be art projects. They can be movie projects. They can be anything you want. You can buy your own ticket. You don't have to go yourself. You can send your mother-in-law if you want. You can do whatever you want. Increased access to space for you and for mankind. This picture I took from the window of this bus, my last launch uh, in May, I had 800 people out at the launch site. Did anybody ever hear of that, dream, that movie, Field of Dreams? Build it and they will come. This is a picture I took, and as far as my eye could see, there were people coming out at 3 o'clock in the morning, because I like to beat the winds. 3 o'clock in the morning, grandmas, politicians, Everybody, that I, I couldn't believe what it looked like. It's inspiring, isn't it? Now, hope you recognize these guys. This is President Kennedy. This is Werner von Braun. And there's a letter here from our then governor of New Mexico, Jack Campbell, 1963. We in New Mexico believe the first inland aerospace port should be based here and earnestly solicit the acceptance, your acceptance of our idea. A mere 49 years later, here we are at the opening of the Gateway to Space, which is the terminal hangar facility for this vehicle system at Spaceport America. And what we hope is that you understand future living. You're a part of it. I expect that you students who want to go to space have got to earn your way. I'm sure when you go on a vacation in the summer, your parents ask you, are you going to get a job to pay for this? That you want a car, are you going to get a job to pay for the gas? Increase access to space for mankind. It is an idea worth spreading, and I hope you think about it. Thank you.